now in control of the countdown. Firing chain is armed. Sound suppression water system activated. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. The purpose of an engineer is to uphold the safety of others as their priority, but on occasions these commitments are broken and can result in a catastrophic event. Today we are going to highlight the ethical issues behind the Columbia Space Shuttle disaster on engineering ethics. After World War II, the United States and the Soviet Union were engaged in the Cold War. This was a broad contest over the principles and commitments of the non-aligned nations. During this period, space exploration emerged. It was a major area of contest and became known as the space race. Some major accomplishments conducted by NASA in the first 23 years of its existence were human spaceflight initiatives, that is Mercury's single astronaut program to ascertain if a human could survive in space. Project Gemini, which consisted of two astronauts practicing space operations, especially rendezvous and docking of spacecraft, as well as extravehicular activity. And in came Project Apollo to explore the moon. Project Apollo was a singular achievement of NASA during its early years, and it was involved with human exploration of the moon. It became NASA's priority on May 25, 1961, and they spent the next 11 years doing so, costing $25.4 billion over the life of the program. Neil Armstrong and Edwin Buzz Aldrin Jr. were the first to successfully land on the moon, completing their task and returning to Earth safely. During the period of 1981 to 2011, NASA space shuttles have been rocketing from the Florida coast into Earth's orbit. The five orbiters were Columbia, Challenger, Discovery, Atlantis, and Endeavour, which have flown more than 130 times, carrying over 350 people into space and traveling more than half of a billion miles. It was the morning of January 16, 2003. Columbia was finally going to be launched subsequent to several delays over a two-year period. After 81.7 seconds, when Columbia was at approximately 20,000 meters, a large piece of insulating foam, foam came off the external tank and damaged the edge of the shuttle's left wing. When engineers witnessed this catastrophe, they expressed their concern to NASA officials that this damage to the left wing could cause failure, but they were overtly disregarded. Nothing was addressed in the two weeks Columbia spent in orbit because NASA management believed that very little could have been done to remedy the situation. Over the next 16 days, apprehension filled the air. It was February 1st, the scheduled day for Columbia to return to Earth. As the shuttle was above the California coastline, traveling at 23 times the speed of sound, that is traveling at 7,000, 826.67 meters per second, trouble swamped over the shuttle. 
wind and heat entered the wing and blew it apart because there was no longer any heat resistant protection. The left wing's leading edge was either damaged or missing. At 8.59 a.m., the voices from the crew of five men and two women echoed for what was unfortunately the last time. The communicator tried to contact Mission Control, however, was unsuccessful. The shuttle had lost contact. Tragically, NASA could not verify what was happening on board Columbia. Columbia began to crumble. Dallas residents claim they heard a loud boom and saw streaks of smoke in the sky. The shuttle had disintegrated over southeast Texas. Adding salt to the wound, two pilots aboard a search helicopter were killed in a crash while looking for debris. Debris and remains of crew members were found in more than 2,000 locations across East Texas. This Columbia disaster was the second major tragedy in the history of the Space Shuttle program. The first being on January 28, 1986, when Space Shuttle Challenger broke apart after launching. There were no survivors. NASA was forced to suspend all Space Shuttle flights for more than two years as it investigated the disastrous Columbia disaster. The poor organizational practices had returned to the doors of NASA, such as their no concern over the fluctuation from expected performance, constant scheduling pressure, and a silent safety program. So NASA's culture had as much to do with the accident as the incident in home. They were more or less focused about achieving their goals and in return they developed a, a kind of uniformity of thought that did not consider vital input. So internally there were some organizational barriers that prevented effective communication of some of the critical information. This kind of dysfunctional culture discouraged honest communication within NASA and despite formal acts being presented, things were never being sought or being listened to from the engineers. So um, NASA's culture it really consists of three things. One, accepting mission success over engineering understanding, whereby they, they heavily relied on past success as a substitute for some of the engineering practices from highly qualified engineers that they themselves hired. Also, if for example, like say if you, you see something happening or occurring abnormally over a period of time, you will begin to think that it's normal. The fact that it happened several times, you will tend to ignore it. This kind of culture shaped NASA to where it is right now. And also, secondly, it had like a, a stipend of differences of opinion. When important issues were like communicated within the organization, messages were often softened as it goes up the management chain, therefore making people at all levels feeling less compelled to bring safety matters and less feeling rather intimidated. Thirdly, it had the evolution of an informal chain of command. Engineers were often put in a difficult situation of having to prove that the operation is rather unsafe than prove that the system itself is safe. But this is not the only thing that really shaped NASA to what it is right now. But if these systematic flaws are not really dissolved, the scene is set for yet another accident. But there were also some external challenges that faced NASA within the organization. For example, the history, the finances, um, the politics also played a part. So the culture of NASA didn't just change in a direction like in a blink of an eye. It dates back to as far as 1957 when Russia launched the Sputnik 1. The US government could not allow the, the war rivals, the cold war rivals to to be on top, so compromising one factor for another started from way back when. Also, secondly, the, the government of the US government, they, they normally put pressure on NASA. They came to like the very strict schedule that they had to meet with little margin of error. This kind of contributed to NASA's do as a tool culture as well to the demise of safety professionals and safety aspects of the shuttle. Somewhat a, a once concern were kept to oneself state of mind. Also, 
economics of finance was a very big issue, whereby over the years NASA was have been starved of funds either by the government or by tight deadlines they had to meet. Being neglected, finances contributed to, to the breakdown of the safety aspect of the space shuttle system, which led to NASA's employee asked to do incredibly tough things in such little time to help them to bring up the standard that they had to meet. Um, under the administration of, I believe his name was Daniel Goldin, the man responsible for the mantra, faster, better, cheaper. They, they, they more, were more concerned about getting things done rather than the safety aspect of the whole operation. While there were challenges internally and externally, the value system of the engineers and management had a part to play leading up to this disaster. The team key attitude went against the organizational culture according to the investigation body. Some of the values that NASA went against were did not encourage corrupt information, they intimidated groups or individuals that gave them perspective on things. Um, NASA softened the content of a message as it was elevated to management. In spite of the organizational culture, the engineers did their job. However, the key attitudes affected them in two ways in terms of the investigation. The engineering team required better imaging to acquire higher clarity, but this information was never sent to the relevant department. However, this was no fault of the engineering department. It also affected them negatively because they allowed the culture of the organization to continue. As a result of this, this caused severe problems within NASA. So, what do you think could have been done differently to avoid this disaster? According to NASA officials, there weren't any possible methods to save the, the crew of Columbia, but I beg to differ. Long before missions were undertaken, flight controllers, hardware engineers, and astronauts engaged in a practice called waterfing. This is where many difficult failures were tried out and many recovery procedures were practiced. But I think they could have done a spacewalk. This is where they would allow some of the crew members to go outside the craft, take pictures and do inspections and send these results back to the control room where they would now assess it and come up with possible recovery methods to help save these crew members. Or they maybe could have sent a rescue shuttle out into space. But then again, people might think this is a, that is a movie scene <laughs> where there is something you'll see in a movie where one spacecraft wants to save an ex-spacecraft but at least it was an attempt. Instead. They left these crew members out there to dry. Tell me, how has the study of this disaster impacted you? The culture of NASA didn't pay off for me because of their culture and practice. They had to go down for two years to the precious company. They should have granted the engineers the request. Should have been ethical and professional. Researching this Columbia disaster brought to light many emotions. However, I was flooded with anger. I believe that the loss of the lives of the seven crew members and the two pilots could have been prevented. In my opinion, the respective parties demonstrated no worth for the lives of others. How it impacted me? Um, well, the disaster showed me that some people ethical platform is unchangeable. No matter the degree of tragedy, you can't change it. As much as you try to change someone's value system or a group of persons, say for instance an organization, if it is deeply embedded, it will not change. It is a very sad truth. As technology advances to improve the standard of mankind, so must values, ethics and the professionalism of the human mind towards engineers. As aspiring engineers, we must always try to do our job to the best of our ability and have a sense of good moral values. Although sometimes we may not be in the position to do things in the way things should have been done, this may be a result of pressure from management or co-workers. It was heartfelt. 
It leads me to wonder if the government would leave hang me out to dry one day. Or compromise safety where my life is concerned. For political gains and world recognition. It really leaves me to wonder. The launch of the Columbia was surrounded with an air of animosity, deception and negligence. Colombia was also antagonized with politics and financial restriction. Recognizing the many faults within this project, it was undeniable that if good judgment, long-term development and success were high primacies, Colombia would have been a realization and not a statistic.